Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the third and last, actually it's volume two, but I'm doing it third and last, in Adrian Bolt, The Decca Legacy. And this is the most controversial set of all. It contains his vocal music and some rather intriguing vocal music at that, which we'll get to momentarily. First, we have to talk about Handel. You get two recordings of the complete Messiah. Now, one is from 1954 and the other is from like 1960, 60-ish, 61, 62, somewhere in there. The dates are in here. I don't really care what they are. One is mono, the other is stereo. And the casts are pretty good. Um, for the mono one, we have Jennifer Vivian, who's really very good, Norma Proctor, um, George, uh, it was this guy, George Moran, or Marin, or Mayan, or I can't even read it, Moran, and Owen Brannigan, fresh from his latest Gilbert and Sullivan stint um, with the London Philharmonic Orchestra and Chorus. Now, for the second one, we have Joan Sutherland, who ornaments a bit, and Grace Bumbry, Kenneth McKellar, and David Ward, who don't ornament at all with the London Symphony Orchestra and Chorus. Now, what are we to make of these? First of all, they are complete, which was very, very rare then. Second of all, they do not use some trumped up arrangement with extra stuff. It's an attempt to go back um, as much as they could back in that day to Handel's original score, um, which is good, and to play it complete. Now, modern folk here will say that it's slow and heavy and anachronistic, which it is. But of course, today's performances are fast and light and anachronistic. So forget the anachronism part. We really have no idea whether Bolt Tempe and other things bear any resemblance to what was or was not done in Handel's day. And I don't particularly care. All I'm interested in is the performance. And the general consensus is that the mono one is a bit livelier and fresher than the stereo one. And I agree with that. I really do. I, I think it's the better of the two. And it's certainly a deeply felt, lovely performance of Messiah. You may not be able to tolerate it now because you grew up on the period instrument ones, or you may think uh, it's really good. It's entirely up to you. I think the first one is really good. I really do. It, it, it's a, a very committed and beautiful rendering of Messiah, even if some of the tempi are slow. And if it's too slow, you just skip to the next number, which is sort of what they did in Handel's day anyway. So I mean, it doesn't make any difference. I just, think, I just think that it's good to have these performances. But two of them, frankly, is like, you know, too much of a good thing. But he did it, and it's complete, so that's good. Next, we get Asus and Galatea. Now, this is terrific. Yes, it is anachronistic. Well, I mean, it's anachronistic in the sense that, you know, it, Bolt leaves out some of the da capos and the da capo arias. But I have to tell you, you know, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if an occasional da capo fell by the wayside back in the day also. You never really know. We're just assuming everyone did both of them and ornamented the living daylights out of the repeats. I don't know. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. The bottom line is this is a terrific Asus and Galatea. It's really a legendary performance of it, and it's beautiful. It features Joan Sutherland and in really fresh voice, singing beautifully, and Peter Pears, who also is in really fresh voice and singing beautifully. It's absolutely lovely, and he keeps up with her in Happy We. I mean, they actually manage to, to do that endless happy stuff. Completely, I, I, I'm amazed. And so will you be. And Owen Brannigan again, fresh from Dick Deadeye, is, is, is back to be, to be Polyphemus, the Cyclops. Oh, he's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And there's this other guy here, this David Gallagher, who's not so wonderful. And the Philo Musica of London plays beautifully. And I have to say, Bolt's, Bolt's tempos seem to be just about right here. I mean, forget, you know, whether, you know, he, what he does with some of the arias. It's really, really beautiful, heartfelt. Uh, it's, it's marvelous. It's absolutely marvelous. It, it, it wears its years lightly and sounds just delicious. Now, after that, we've got a bunch of recitals, and these are a little weird. First, we have the, te the tenor, Kenneth McKellar, who was a very good tenor, singing a bunch of famous Handel songs and arias, some from opera, some from oratorios, some in their original language, some not. He doesn't care. I don't care. None of us cares. This is going to be an I don't care review. I have to tell you, because either either you like it or you don't. 
it's a historically interesting set. And so if you're going to be a, a period instrument prude, then just just pass and let the rest of us enjoy ourselves. But the interesting thing about this 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 nine CD nine out of thirteen here, is that you get the Clark trumpet voluntary and Britain's God Save the Queen arranged by Britain and conducted by Britain, and there you go. So that's disc nine. Now CD ten, and CD eleven. This is where things get a little weird. CD ten is a recital of Bach and Handel arias a 1952 recording featuring none other than Kathleen Ferrier. Now, Kathleen Ferrier is an acquired taste. Everybody says she was at her most transcendentally luminous in sacred music such as this. Um, I have no opinion as to whether she was or wasn't. I do not think she was a great singer, and that's me. I totally, totally concede that. Others just loved her and heard something that I don't in her performances, but so I, I, there's no point even talking about bolts roll with it because no one cares. It's a, it's a Kathleen Ferrier disc. And if you're a Ferrier person, you already own it. And if you're not a Ferrier person, you're about to own it if you buy this. But here's the weird thing. Here's the weird thing. You get the same recital of Bach and Handel arias from 1960 in stereo. What's interesting is that Ferrier was long dead by 1960. So what did they do? They took the vocal track from the 1952 recording and they hooked up Sir Adrian to, or Adrian or whatever his name was, to, to you know, headphone thingies. And they re-recorded all of the accompaniments in stereo. And then they reattached her voice to the stereo accompaniment. Well, according to the notes here, the very, very good notes. I mean, all these Australian eloquence sets, by the way, are really class acts. I mean, they're sturdily packaged. They have beautiful liner notes. They're really very, very good. So they were apparently, Bolt was thrilled with the ability to hear the great Kathleen Ferrier in luminous stereo to match her luminous vocalism. And you may be too. I, I didn't really care for it in mono, so I don't care whether it's in stereo. See, I told you this was an I don't care review. Um, alas. But anyway, some of you will care far more than I did. And then we've got, let's see, oh yes, um, a Bach and another Bach and Handel recital, this time with Kirsten Flagstad, and Great Sacred Songs by Mendelssohn, Gruber, Gounod, Parry, Bortniansky, Vada, or Wade, and Little with Kirsten Flagstad. This obviously is a Kirsten Flagstad pair of discs. And again, you know, Bolt's presence is completely irrelevant. Um, what matters is Kirsten Flagstad, who was one of the great singers of the 20th century. And so all of you Kirsten Flagstadians, I mean, there was also a Kirsten Flagstad box and stuff like that. So this has all been around. And, you know, the, the fans of Kirsten Flagstad also had it. All I could say is that she's a much better singer than Kathleen Ferrier, in my humble opinion. And uh, that's it. That's the whole set. So you get two messiahs, Asus and Galatea, famous Handel songs and aria with, arias with Kenneth McKellar, and then two of the same Ferrier recitals, one in mono, one in stereo, and two Kirsten Flagstad recitals. It's a very odd box of stuff, let's face it. But it is exactly the kind of thing that hardcore collectors will be looking for and are interested in. And far be it for me to suggest that their interest is in any way misplaced, because at the best, the first Messiah, Asus and Galatea, the singers are who they are. This is some really marvelous stuff. And it's beautifully presented, and it's wonderful to have it back. And that's how I feel about it. And that, by the way, I care about. I care about the packaging. I care about the presentation. I care about the love that went into it. And I care about you all. So there you go. It's up to you now to decide if you want this particular Deco Legacy Volume 2. And keep on listening, friends. Thank you for joining me. Take care.